All right, guys, thank you for joining me on this beautiful Sunday. Oh, I should make this full screen. Sorry about that. Um, and just forewarning, I do have food here, so we'll be eating. I'll try to mute myself uh, when I take a bite. But um, this is the Ubisoft press conference for 2020. Obviously, it's not at A3, but uh, we're getting it, so... That's cool. Um, there is some controversy with Ubisoft. I wouldn't even call it controversy. I would just call it they fucked up big time. With uh, They had sexual assault allegations, if you didn't hear. Um, they they came out and said they're not going to make a statement on it in this because it's pre-recorded. And I use air quotes as if they couldn't throw in some statement. But... But yeah, but here we are. So I'm going to be doing this for more press conferences moving forward. Um, I'm going to be doing it for the Xbox One on Ju in July. I was going to do it for the Treehouse this week. But it really wasn't anything. It was mostly just like gameplay, you know, kind of narrated stuff. But uh, hey, we're starting off with Watchdog Legions. So I'm going to mute myself for a second as we watch this preview. Wow, I'm sorry, guys. I didn't realize there was no noise. I'm really sorry. You didn't really miss anything, so yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. The, the first three minutes will have just me talking and no noise, but uh, yeah, here's noise from here on out. to the resistance. A bit of a welcome gift for our new member. <laughs> you should have told me it was a bloody question party. Try it on. A new chief suspect has been identified as David Ford, a 43-year-old London taxi driver. He has no criminal record, but is currently believed to be a terrorist. People have been asked not to be identified. The authorities advise all members
It's a film, it's not a game? I'm Clint Hawkins. Clint has been a long time Interesting. here at Ubisoft, and now he's bringing this vision to Watch Dogs Legion. Um, so yeah, what we just saw was an amazing short film by the director Alberto Mieldo that uh, was inspired. Oh, it was only a short film. Okay. And looks at that was pretty cool. Game and the universe and the characters through his a lot cooler than the actual game. <laughs> Like the film, Watch Dogs Legion tells the story of ordinary heroes setting aside their differences in order to come together as a collective and to fight for a positive change. You can literally recruit and play anyone who you see in the open world. You profile people that are interesting to you, you help them with their problem, you play their origin mission. Just help me get some closure and I'll do whatever you want. Sounds like a dead sec problem. Leave it to us. And that's how you recruit them into your team. And then they become the heroes of the game and, and the stars of your story. I was not a fan of Please, Watch Dogs 1 or 2. You with Albion? I'm tickled, but think more underground. What, dead sec? Yeah, right, and I'm Che Guevara. You're done. And they make the story not only, you know, unique to them, but unique to you as the player and, and personal to you because they're, you know, heroes that you've chosen and invested in. What would I say to fans? I guess I'd say, you know, uh, take care of yourselves, stay safe, welcome to the resistance. Ah, London town. I'll still gladly give Legion a shot, though. I think they have good ideas. Hopefully, they uh, figure it <clears throat> figure it out a little bit more in uh, Watch Dogs Legion. Privatized military? What? I like using a uh, grandma aged lady as the mob leader. That's cool. Any of the brave Londoners you see walking the streets can be recruited into your team. Like him. Her. Or even her. Everyone can become your next secret weapon. In our first mission, we need to get some dirt on Nigel Cass, and that means breaking into Albion headquarters inside the Tower of London. All it's an actual castle. from the streets of London. They all have unique abilities, and you're free to tackle this mission with whoever you like. Pretty much whatever. But as a construction worker, he has a particular set of tools that make him handy. He can even call his own cargo drone. Perfect for gate crashing when you're not invited. And who needs a regular old gun when you have a bloody mail? How did they not see that? A cargo drone thing is um, really interesting. Jesus Christ, what is that thing? Perhaps we could approach this mission differently. If you 
you'd rather keep your distance, we've got you covered. Amy is a drone expert. What have we here? A real tech connoisseur. Hate spiders, but love this one. What an adorable creepy crawler. It feels like they added more variety. To the gameplay. I feel like the issue with uh, some of the previous ones was it was too monotonous um, after the first like few hours. I was I was so tuned out of Watch Dogs 2. I couldn't believe I finished that game. And if you are not into direct confrontation, there are more ways than one to get the job done. Recruiting an Albion officer like Brielle here might be challenging, but it'll get you inside restricted Albion areas. Don't mind me, just doing recon for a bunch of insurgents. However, do anything suspicious and she'll probably wind up with a bullet in the back of her head. Give me the brief for entry. We're missing the human element here. I can get the defense minister on the line right now. Well, if you two will look. running our streets illegals threatening our family the police commissioner himself assassinated by terrorists well that seems to be enough evidence next up we're crushing okay organ farming operation and putting a stop to it that's close dang this is a very extended look at this game Say hello to Mickey. The man lives for his team. I put another air on the chest. And doesn't mind getting his hands dirty. He does have a slight drinking problem, though. And he's passed out. Ah, well... We'll come back to him. You know what? Let's go with someone a bit more professional. Is that Keanu Reeves? It's almost crass to call him a hitman. This guy's literally John Wick. Here's the bastard responsible. Ah, done and dusted. Not bad, not bad if I do say so, in it. Not everyone in London is a legendary assassin or a super spy, but everyone can be a hero. So get out there, find the best recruits, and build your resistance. It's time to take back London. Plunging the player into a living, breathing, eh. teeming with unique locales and characters. Always been a central pillar. I mean, it looks okay. It doesn't look bad or anything, but so what goes into those worlds? I'll still buy it. Here's Amanda Mutt to tell us more. My name's Amanda Munt. I'm a level artist on Watch Dogs Legion at Ubisoft Toronto. Being a level artist, I think, is the coolest job in video games because we do get the freedom to to kind of like pick and choose what little details we want to depict and we get ample opportunities to tell the stories that we want to tell in the spaces that we're assigned to. I have the capacity to hide things and you know like small little easter eggs 
in AC Unity, there was a boat somewhere in the world that was covered in cats. <laughs> and then it happened again in Watch Dogs 2, and there may or may not be something in London that is a boat filled with cats in some capacity. <laughs> I was fortunate enough to go to E3 last year. Some of the people that I was showing our demo to were from London, so no matter where I dropped them in the city, they'd go, oh my I God. remember that boat with cats. I saw, I saw a Reddit thing a while ago about it but i've never seen it myself about it like that feels so good as somebody who you know builds these worlds with care i love it <laughs> and now some news for brawl hall of fame in just a few weeks you'll be able to battle it out with your favorite legends on ios and android devices Oh, bra holla update, cool. It's coming to iOS and Android. That's pretty cool. I feel like it'll work on that platform. Rivals of Aether is still a better game, though, in my opinion. I'm a big platform fighter guy, so I mean, I'll support it. I'm not gonna. I'm not a big Android, iOS guy, but I'll support Brawlhalla. Ooh, Might and Magic, cool. No, it has not been a great seven months. I can speak for that. <laughs> we all can speak for that. It is not the opposite. They're really pushing their uh, mobile games. The target is being held on the ground floor. Here's something. Oh. A new shooter. Elite squad. Interesting. And it looks like it's a capture defend. Kind of like a... Uh, a Rainbow Six Siege. Very cartoony uh, art design. Oh, shoot. Look who it is, boys. Hey, take this. Wow, they switched up the art style so much. That looks fun. That looks really fun, actually. I'm up for that. I'm excited for that. Rainbow Six Siege first launched, and the community has never been stronger. In celebration of this milestone, Ubisoft Montreal has put together a special video to thank all of the amazing players and developers that have helped Siege become the game it is today.
I've only played Siege a few times. I think it's a really good game. It's just not December for me. A small team released Rainbow Six Siege. A game built on a strong vision. Creativity, competitiveness, and team play. For the player, the 1st of December is a beginning, but for us also. Il faut tout de suite s'engager et dire aux joueurs ce jeu est installé, tu peux t'y installer aussi et nous serons là. That original vision was quickly adopted by our passionate community, propelling it to a whole new level. Oh my god! I got it! I got it! This is such a special moment and being at one year anniversary of Rainbow Six. Now, game being uh, stronger than ever, and more players today than we had in the past. It means I hope the Six Siege esports community continues to grow. I don't necessarily watch the games, but I uh, really hope it continues to grow. Subject like matchmaking, connectivity, all those aspects are absolutely critical to the experience of the player. Through it all. We're always driven by you, our community, and together we grow stronger. There is no sequel plan and we're here for the next 10 years to so expect more Rainbow Six in your life for quite some time. I want to see more elite squad. Now 60 million players strong. We're just getting started. From the devs that build the game to the community that plays it. Thank you. Million. If it's you a lot. Haven't tried it yet, dive into our new Operation Steel Wave update available now and take Ace and Malusi out for a spin. A few days ago, we introduced y'all to a brand new multiplayer shooter. Now, it's time to venture into the hyperscape. I still haven't played this, it just doesn't look super appealing. It looks kind of kind of bland. The movement and things like that and the art style is interesting um but the gameplay seems mm, i don't know how to describe it but i'm just not a huge fan then again i haven't played it though i've only watched people play it. that's not supposed to be there well, let me get you all to speed okay about 30 years ago everything that we feared about our future started to come true we made some good decisions we made some bad decisions. Actually, we made a lot of bad decisions. And so, here we are. Ten billion souls living in the crush of the megacity. But the people at prison changed everything. They gave everyone a way out. The hyperscape. Oh, it's some Ready Player One stuff. By far is Crown Rush. This is where anyone can become someone. I don't understand adding a narrative function to Battle Royale. That seems like counterproductive, but whatever. I mean, this is kind of a cool trailer. And counterproductive in the way where the narrative shouldn't have to influence the gameplay mechanics. If you get good at Crown Rush, it can change your life. But strange things have been happening lately. Rumors Maybe there is a narrative. Users disappearing from the real world. We have to find it. Some of 
I'm JC, creative director on Hyperscape. JC's work on Far Cry Primal and multiple Prince of Persia titles has established him as a top creative here at Ubisoft. For me, what's exciting is uh, we started uh, building it from scratch, so uh, seeing it grow, uh, adding ideas uh, is really cool. Hello, contender. Welcome to the Hyperscape. The game takes place in 2054. It's in the future where humanity has grown a little darker. One of the, the companies there, they are launching what's called the Hyperscape, which is a virtual world, the Internet of the future. It's the place where everything converges. Uh, within the virtual world, there is a battle royale that takes place in the virtual city of Neo Arcadia. Then we also introduce a lot of new things. You get the opportunity to do parkour on the rooftops, to go into interiors where it's much more narrow, much more stressful. Uh, you get to go to the landmarks where there's more uh, opportunities to get cool items, but also more players, so it's a risk-reward kind of deal. We introduce the notion of hacks, special abilities that you can pick up on the fly to adapt your tactics. With hacks, you can do things like uh, teleport. I'm sorry, but I do not see this being a success. Like, it's... It's got interesting things. It's got an interesting art style. It seems like they had a bigger budget than, say, some of these other Battle Royale projects. And it looks like it runs really well, but it's, I don't see any differences. Everything he's describing... That's different, but I mean... Okay. That seems kind of fun, but at the same time, I just, I don't know. Maybe there's just not enough differences for me. Like, the gunplay seems too standard. It seems like too apex. You know, like nothing we haven't seen before. I will check it out. It will be on my Battle Royale playlist, but I'm a little skeptical about it, but we'll see. The digital world of the hyperscape gave our artists and developers incredible freedom when it came to designing characters. Production manager Anna Maria Muska is going to take us behind the scenes of character design. My name is Anna Maria Muska. I'm the production manager for characters and weapons on Hyperscape. We have paid an exceptional amount of detail to our characters. We switched different outfits, different fashion statements, different tattoos, different materials until we see them as real individuals, as real people. So the second you pick a character, you see them in game, you understand what their motivations are and what drives them and what challenges them. This was the first lineup of characters. This is our default base, but even starting from the hair down, everything has been meticulously thought of. Would this person actually like this type of outfit? Would this person enjoy the type of tattoos that we're putting on them? Will they actually like to be in this body? Each season, we plan to produce new outfits for these characters. So we're hoping some of our players are going to see the effort and maybe even correlate some of the accessories to what's going to happen in the game. 
I'm very excited to see it in people's hands. As we move into the next generation of gaming, Ubisoft has been working closely with console makers to take advantage of all the extraordinary capabilities these new consoles will offer. Now we have a special guest to tell us a little more. Hey everyone, Phil Spencer from Xbox. With Watch Dogs Legion, Ubisoft is supporting smart delivery. So you will get the absolute best version of the game on any version of Xbox you're playing on. On Series X, you'll get to take advantage of the amazing work the team has done with DirectX ray tracing to create an absolutely immersive version of London. This guy has a weird eye thing. He just blinks a lot. Ubisoft has a unique ability to create immersive worlds. He's a well-spoken guy. To drive what, our is our, what is his eyes doing? I'm a huge fan of Assassin's Creed. I love the time I've spent exploring the world in Assassin's Creed Odyssey. And I can't wait for you to see the gameplay from Assassin's Creed Valhalla that's coming up now. Man, this uh, Ubisoft, Ubisoft presser has been... A bunch of Z's so far. Nothing, nothing exciting really. The only thing I was really excited, well, am excited about, is Elite Squad. But more Assassin's Creed. I'm bored. Is really, really inspiring. When we did our research, we found that you know there were not mindless barbarians. Vikings were actually farmers trying to find new lands for them to settle. And so they had really human motivations. So for us to have this opportunity to tell kind of the real story about Vikings and kind of separate ourselves from the myths and the folklore is really something that drove us to, to make this game. The team went to Norway and England to take the same road that the Vikings did to really experience what it meant to be a Viking at that time. And then leaving Norway, which was barren but majestic and just coming by boat in england and see those rolling green hills full of sheep full of life is just this moment that most likely the vikings felt as well you know to see this land of opportunity and this is exactly the feeling we want players to experience in this game it is I do love that feeling in video games where you come across something and you're like, whoa, this is something else. You decide when you start the game. They will have to leave Norway to settle in England because you just can't live in Norway anymore. There's too much political pressure, no resources available. Obviously, in England, it's full of Anglo Saxons and other people and they don't really want you there so you will have to fight your way there to kind of build your own settlement and see your clan prosper vikings were brutal warriors Shield! and the fact that they were mastering a lot of weapons coming from the medieval times really inspired us to kind of revamp the fight system to leverage the brutality and the intensity of Viking combat. Vikings were not only fighting face to face, they were masters of stealth and deception when needed. They used basically any sort of tactics they could use to win the battle. So we want to portray the full range of combat that you can imagine coming from the Vikings. We are very happy to finally be able to show you the game we've all been working on. So please enjoy this deep dive. This actually looks pretty good, I won't lie. I want to see if the gameplay has changed at all from like previous iterations. But the choice to go with Vikings seems is very intriguing to me. Especially in an Assassin's Creed game.
who would lead his or her battle-hardened warriors across the North Sea to the British Isles. Eivor is driven by an ambitious goal, to build a thriving Norse settlement in a hostile land. The good of our clan, it is time we go our vices. What happened to, like, the Animus and all that stuff in the early Assassin's Creed games? Does it not exist anymore? Or does it? You get to burn down villages. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's funny. Kind of appealing for a sick person like me, but it is what it is. <laughs> services, better tools, and new settlers. At the heart of your settlement is the Alliance map. It will serve as a record of the allies you have made, and a guide for future opportunities. The Viking Age was a time of warriors and legends. In Valhalla, you will find the largest variety of enemies ever assembled in an Assassin's Creed game. Every archetype offers a unique challenge. Some will coordinate with their allies for special attacks, while others will use nearby objects. The gameplay looks fun. Including the bodies of fallen warriors. To face these attacks, you must find and exploit your opponent's weaknesses to gain the upper hand. Take the fight to your foes with a host of brutal new combat abilities. Snare them with a Viking harpoon. Pummel them with throwing pieces. Incapacitate them with the new stun system to keep them at a distance, or finish them off. Dual wield any two weapons you wish to unleash a deadly combination of attacks. Customize your fighting style as you see fit. The game looks uh, pretty beautiful. situations call for violence in this new land a viking must find a way to adapt as eivor is not welcome in england you may need to outsmart your enemies here's some assassin's creed goodness that i miss playing use eivor's hood and cloak to blend with crowds and slip past watchful eyes an unseen hunter among the people Seems more or less <clears throat> like any other Assassin's Creed game. More vast in nature, but um, gameplay, objective style, level design, aesthetic, you know, art style all seems pretty similar. Wow, that's a crazy fight. It looks like a gorgeous game, so I'm not hating on it. It just seems... Along the lines of previous Assassin's Creed games, no, no shock, but uh, true. But as you push deeper into England, the enemy will push back. In a series of climactic moments, Assassin's Creed Valhalla will feature massive assaults in which you will lead Eivor's army into battle against heavily guarded Saxon fortresses. Assassin's Creed Valhalla will transport you to wondrous and haunted lands inspired by Norse myths and England's pagan roots. It will challenge and surprise with unforgettable characters, thrilling triumphs and tragic bosses, giving you the chance to live your 
How long is this? Like an hour and a half? Oh hour, hour and a half? If it's two, I'd be very shocked. This is two hours long. And there's a post show. I don't know if I'll stick around for the post show, but November 17th, not too far away. Ninth century England is truly unlike anything the franchise has seen before. Assassin's Creed Valhalla will release this holiday season. Mm, no, it's not, guy. <laughs> Xbox One, PS4, PC, and Stadia. We're close to wrapping up today, but before we go, our CEO, Eve Demo, is here to wow. say a few words. I hope you will have enjoyed what you have They showed us four games. I guess, you know, that's not games. shocking. I am proud of our team for delivering an ambitious, broad, and creative lineup of games. And we haven't shown you everything yet. In fact, we have a lot more to come. So you will have another Ubisoft forward to reveal even more about our upcoming games. But before ending this show, we have one more thing to share with you. The big reveal. I like that red smoke. It's cool. This is a cool trailer. I'm not sure what this is. Oh, this is, um, Far Cry. Is this the movie? Or is it... There's a Far Cry movie, I think. Or no? It's like so many random video game movies coming out, so I'm not sure. Looks like it's just the game. This is a cool trailer, though. Of course, they have uh, that Breaking Bad guy, um, Hector. What's that actor's name? I can't remember. That was a cool trailer, though. Four basic parts. The shell, which contains the explosive, the fuse, the handle, and of course, the pin. What do you do? Breathe. The pin simply vaporizes. It is only when you let go that this pin. Jesus. That was actually pretty tense. If you only want to 
He's gonna make him throw it or something. This is a psycho. Well, February 18th, 21. They give us all release dates. I don't know if those were already announced. Probably not. And with that, we're wrapping up our first Ubisoft Forward. Today, we've seen the next generation of Assassin's Creed, the birth of a resistance in Watch Dogs Legion, the cyber chaos of Hyperscape, and the epic reveal of Far Cry's newest installment, along with so much more. Remember, we'll be back later this year with another Ubisoft Forward filled with tons of game news and updates. Thanks for joining us. Well, that's over. Um, I have thoughts. <laughs> Uh, there's really nothing spectacular in this entire press conference. I mean, the games look good. Don't get me wrong. The games look interesting. Like, all the games look interesting. But it's, like, rinse and repeat Ubisoft. We get the same Far Cry. We get Assassin's Creed. We get something Tom Clancy. And uh, now it's Watch Dogs is, like, their current franchise single player they really just simplified their their games lineup every year and they just expand on the same properties they already they already have and just try and perfect them and uh make them d do it in interesting ways and maybe they're doing that a little bit but uh there's nothing really to gain from watching these ubisoft presentations anymore um the only thing to gain anymore is essentially the new gameplay mechanics and to see how things are gonna but you're gonna get the same same franchises over and over in terms of like the things i did like tom clancy's elite squad was definitely interesting i really i think it's the art style more than anything for me you know, not that harsh simulator, realistic type of uh, gunplay, but the cartoony, no recoil, first-person shooter. And it's kind of it looks like it's a blend of a few different things. And I'm excited for it. I'm really excited for it. I think it's going to be quite interesting. But outside of that... I mean, Hyperscape, do we really need another pretty generic Battle Royale? 
I don't think so. I don't think it will garner much of an audience. I don't see how it differentiates itself from Apex or Warzone. Like, I don't think it's going to take from any of those crowds. I don't think it's going to take from the Fortnite crowd. I've seen too many half-assed BRs to think it's going to work. Assassin's Creed looks pretty cool. Like I'll, I'll pl- I might play uh, Assassin's Creed. I might play Watch Dogs as well. Like Watch Dogs has some interesting stuff. But uh, overall, just kind of, you know, rinse and repeat type stuff. Um, I didn't play the last Assassin's Creed. I've been since Black Flag. I've been kind of down on the franchise, not because it's bad again, just because I'm getting sick of the same type of stuff over and over. But uh, overall, you know, not horrible. It's not like I was offended by the games they released or were releasing this year. It's just not surprising. And um, after seeing the Sony preview or presser you know it was cool to see so many new things coming from them and so many interesting new titles on ps5 and whatnot new ips and all these new interesting gameplay mechanic you know gameplay styles coming into view whereas ubisoft kind of just played it conservatively played by ear Um, we'll see what happens with ubisoft for the rest of the year they have some issues internally and uh, they didn't address it again at all during the press conference. Um, I'll leave a link to the report, the uh, art- article in my in the description. But um, oh man, I mean, we'll see. And they said they're gonna have another one this year. Maybe they're trying to do it like a treehouse, uh, Nintendo treehouse, where it's like two or three a year, and they just get all their information out. I think this might be the new way to do it for these companies. But, you know, with these pre-recorded press conferences. But we'll see. I hope E3 comes back strong next year. All right, so thanks everyone for watching. Uh, again, I'll be back with whenever the next Treehouse slash uh, the Xbox conference, which is on which is on the twenty sixth of July. I'll be there for that. And uh, last one, I don't know what else there is. I don't know if E three or you know who or E three EA or any of the big publishers and developers will be releasing anything. Like, I don't think Bethesda will have a press conference, but I could be wrong. Um, But yeah, everyone, thanks for watching. Uh, Leave your thoughts down below in the comments. Um, And uh, I'll see you guys in my next video. I do have a Ubisoft video actually coming out with uh, Trackmania, and there'll be some more of that in the future. So keep an eye out. And thanks for watching.